Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing my November reading wrap up. Although actually before I show you the books that I managed to read this month, which there are 12, which I am very shocked that I managed to read 12 books, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed recently because I got about 200 subscribers in the space of a week and it just absolutely has blown my mind and I am so so grateful for everyone who has been subscribing so thank you so so much it means so much to me and it feels just crazy but I just wanted to say that before we jump into the video but let's jump in now and talk about the 12 books that I managed to read in the month of November. So I read 12 books, I am in the middle of another three books and I DNF'd two books. So let's actually get that out of the way because I usually go worst to best in terms of these videos so I feel like we should talk about the DNFs first. One is a DNF that I am sticking with and one is a DNF that I might pick up again if I'm feeling in the mood for it. So the first DNF that I'm not going back to is Better Than The Movies. I picked this up because I was really in the mood for a lighthearted romance and it is that so if you are looking for something like that it might work for you but for me I didn't realise that it was a teen romance and that it was set in high school and that's just not really my thing and this is kind of based on a girl who is obsessed with rom-coms and romantic movies and there's kind of some classic tropes involved like fake dating and this kind of thing but it was for me just slightly too young for my taste and also at times it just really veered slightly into the cringy territory but I just didn't really love it. So this one I just got to about 50% and then gave up with which I never do but I'm very proud of myself for doing because I was on the hunt this month for finding a five-star read. If you saw my wrap-up from last month you know that I read 20 books in October and none of them were five stars so I was determined this month I didn't care how many books I was going to read but I was going to find a five-star book and I did manage to find not one but two five star reads so I'm very very excited to talk about those they're going to be at the end of the video but as I was saying I was being so much more strict on myself I was saying you have to DNF books that you're not loving so I read about 50% of this and then put it down and I'm very proud of myself and I do not regret that decision and then the second book that I did DNF I got about 10% into this one and I might pick it up again I do have a physical copy and I don't know where it's gone I think I just like put it downstairs or something but it is all the light we cannot see. This one I did DNF for different reasons it's a very slow start and it's also a war historical fiction and they are not my favourite types of books even in the best of times. I will read them especially if they're really really well reviewed and if I'm in the kind of right mental space for it but I heard I had heard amazing things about this one lots of people were saying that it could be a five star read for me over on TikTok and I do just think maybe it could be if I manage to persevere and go through it but this month I had so many other things going on I was doing daily vlogs over on TikTok if you did not know and I was also writing a book which maybe we could talk about in another video but I had so many things going on that I was just like I don't have the mental space to give to this book right now if I'm not enjoying it then I'm just gonna put it down I might pick it up another time I might not and we will see basically but if you have read this please let me know in the comments if you think I should pick it back up again but for now this is a DNF. Okay so now onto the books I actually did finish I'm gonna go from worst to best and because of these dnfs we start at a three star so i'm very very happy with my ratings this month they go from three to five which you can't ask for any better than that so the first book that i want to talk about which is the worst book that i read but in no way is it actually a bad book is the ice dragon by george rr martin if you saw my video where i went through every single book on my tbr i kind of just randomly discovered that i had this book and it's really short it's a children's novel and it is by George R. R. Martin, who wrote the uh, Song of Ice and Fire books. And I honestly have no idea how this came to be on my shelves, but it was just really short. As I said, it's a children's book. It's actually got pictures in it, so it's even shorter than it actually seems. And I did really enjoy the pictures, actually. It was really cute. It took me about half an hour to read one kind of cold evening, and it was fun. It was forgettable, but it was fun. Interestingly, though, I don't think that this is set in the same world as Game of Thrones. It's not actually set in Westeros, which is, I thought it was, but it's not so yeah that was my three star book so next up we have another three star read but this one I'm slightly upset about because I was just convinced that this was going to be a potential five star for me that I might love it like the vibes and the the cover and everything about the way it was described I was like oh my god this is going to be a new favorite book and it ended up not being and I gave it three stars but it might actually kind of be technically lower than that I don't know I did a whole rant review on TikTok but the book I'm talking about is a Study in Drowning by Ava Reed, and I'm so upset about this one. I read Ava Reed's other book, uh, Juniper and Thorn, and I loved it. That is like a five star, or I think like close to a five star read for me. And this one is different though because it's her young adult kind of, I think maybe debut, her first young adult book. This one just 
did not work for me for many reasons. The reason it's still a three star is because I really enjoyed the writing and the vibes that it created. I had some serious issues with a lot of the plot and kind of the mechanics of how the story was put together I didn't really enjoy. So anyway, this is about Effie who is at a prestigious university and she is studying architecture but what she really wants to be is she wants to be a literature student and she is obsessed with this book by this very famous author all about the magical fairy king. She is completely obsessed with this book and she loves it so much because ever since she was a little girl she's had visions or hallucinations of the fairy king coming to her in the night. She's always been told that she is crazy and that these are delusions and she's on medication to try and stop these visions but this book is the only thing that she's found that really speaks to her experience because it's about this fairy king going to a young girl in the night. So she's basically obsessed with this book and this author and then she gets the chance after this author has passed away to go to their house and redesign their family home and that kind of comes about in like a very confusing way and this kind of speaks to some of my issues with the book because I don't know it's not really fully explained why an architecture student a first year architecture student would be able to go and redesign a home. Also why this very reclusive author who has a very reclusive family life would invite strangers into their home after he's passed. It was very strange. But anyway, she goes there and she also meets a literature student who has been invited by the mysterious widow of the author to basically come and look at all of his old letters. And that is also something that's not quite explained to my liking either in this book. But basically the two students in this kind of have a slight rivals to lovers storyline and that's written quite nicely it's quite sweet but for me just so many things about the plot of this book really did not work and I will slightly go into spoilers now so just skip over this if you do really want to read this book because I do want to talk about some of the spoilers so to go into my issues more basically at the very very beginning we know that Effie desperately wants to be a literature student and that in this world it is believed that women can't be writers and that they are not they don't have the brain for it and they're basically they're too stupid to be writers or even to study literature and that is kind of just a, a fact of the, this world and we know that that's going to come up again it's set up right at the beginning that basically all she wants to be is a literature student and she's been denied it so the central mystery in this book are two main things is the fairy king real? Is the visions that Effie is having real? Or is everyone else correct? And she's just been crazy this whole time. Obviously, we kind of know that she's not actually been crazy this whole time because it's set up in a way that's like, it's not really a mystery. We do know that they are real, that magical things are happening. And like this book that she's read is basically talking about the experience that she had. So why would it be exactly the same? Anyway, like we kind of know that that's not really a mystery. And the second mystery is the literature student that she is having this kind of rivals to lovers kind of story arc with is basically trying to prove that the author didn't wasn't the author of this book and that he did not write it. Basically, in the same sentence that he's saying that this is why he's here, he also says that this mysterious widow character is the one who invited him. So immediately you're thinking, okay, so this widow has invited him to this house to be able to prove that she's the one that wrote it because she's been shunned and like kept out of the limelight and no one even knew that he was married for a long time. And obviously that's why that she's invited him to be able to prove that she is the actual author of this book. It's also written from a female perspective and it's about this complicated female character that why would all the incredibly sexist men in this world be able to write this highly complex and active and interesting female main character that Effie so identifies with when they don't even think that women should be able to read, like let alone write. So like basically as soon as this is introduced you're like oh okay so she wrote it. So I was holding on until the end, I was really hoping there was going to be further twists and turns that was going to make it more interesting and it wasn't, that was just it, it was the widow that wrote it. And not only that, at the end there is a whole portion where the widow just sits down and explains everything to the two main characters and if it isn't already obvious enough that was just kind of drove me nuts right at the end because it's just not the way to finish off a story is just to have someone sit down and explain everything. I can kind of get over really obvious twists but I just thought that that was just not very good for the plot and then also the other thing that really annoyed me about this book is this it's called a study in drowning there is loads of water imagery this house that they, she's trying to rebuild is on the edge of a cliff there in this world are these things that happened called the drownings where basically whole villages and towns were wiped out when the sea levels rose and lots of people were flooded. Water and the sea is a huge kind of character in this book and also later on it's revealed that 
Effie is actually a changeling and a changeling is basically when fey creatures steal a human infant and they swap it with a fey creature and basically they get brought up in their respective worlds and basically we find out that her mum tried to do that and then took it back last minute and at that point I was like oh my god like I was having this theory that was basically going to be proven true I was like oh she's a changeling child because I thought the whole time that one of the big reveals was going to be that Effie the reason why she feels different the reason why she feels she doesn't fit into this world is because she's actually some kind of fey creature that she is a mermaid that she is a siren or a selkie or something and that, that was going to be the whole thing that she was going to discover um like she was going to almost drown and then be able to like breathe underwater and realize that she was actually fey the whole time because also there's this other aspect that every male that effie interacts with in this book falls immediately almost in love with her and is like incredibly seduced by her and we're told that she's very beautiful and very alluring as well and I thought that this is going to be some siren magic that she was having because it's almost as if they are immediately put under a spell and I thought that that would be such a fun twist that Effie actually was a fae or a changeling creature also like there's a really complicated relationship with her mother and her mum literally hates her and I'm like oh well that would make sense as well if she was a fae creature but basically no that's it she's not she's just a normal child and the explanation for it is that this fairy king has been haunting her since she was young and he's been kind of almost possessing the men in her life and trying to get at her but also it's just like a commentary on men being gross in general and it's just like it's very simple and like quite reductive and I thought it could have gone in such a more fun and interesting direction anyway I've ranted for far too long about this book but basically it was disappointing and I don't like when I can think of more fun things that can happen in the end and then they don't happen and it makes me rate it lower and I rated this originally when I finished at like a 3.5 and then I put it down to a 3 after I thought about it and now I'm ranting about it again it might be a 2.5 to be honest this actually was quite disappointing for me but yeah I do love the cover and I love the vibes and I'm still going to pick up another Ava Reed book because I love Juniper and Thorn so much but I think I will avoid her young adult books from now on. Next up we have the Token Series of Unfortunate Events book that I managed to read in this month. I've been doing a reread of these if you've seen any of my videos. This one is number eight, The Hostile Hospital. I'm not going to go through the plot of this one because we are number eight in a series and yeah I'm still enjoying this. This one's probably my least favourite so far because we've kind of broke out of the formula of the first seven books um and I just didn't love kind of the way that the plot was going but it's still a good still a good fun read a three star for me and I'm going to carry on with the series next up we have another young adult fantasy and this is an older fantasy series I just started reading and it is Sabriel by Garth Nix I think that's how you say his name this was such a fun one and I really enjoyed the world in which this one was set so basically in this you are following Sabriel who has grown up in a boarding school but basically her father is a really powerful necromancer magician type thing and he basically doesn't come and see her when he's supposed to one day so Sabriel has to travel to the old kingdom and the old kingdom is separated from basically modern normal life by this wall and she has to go into the old kingdom she has to go into the old kingdom to try and find her father and it's very fun it's really creative it's all based on this necromancer magic and and I really enjoyed it I think I will carry on with the series nothing about it was revolutionary or life-changing in any way I also feel like the romantic subplot was a bit um weirdly paced I'll say like it kind of was really slow for a long time and then it really sped up right at the end but it was a good fun one and I think that I will probably carry on with the series. Next up I listened to Good Material by Dolly Alderton as an audiobook. This one I was so so excited for. I love Dolly Alderton's books, her fiction and her non-fiction books and I did really enjoy this one. It's probably my least favourite of her books so far um, but basically this follows Jen and Andy who have just broken up and you're following Andy's perspective and from his point of view Jen's broken up with him out of nowhere he loves her so much and he thought that she loved him as well and it is him basically reeling after this breakup trying to cope with his heartbreak but in classic Dolly Alderton fashion actually a lot of it is discussing friendship and life and love and lots of different things in a beautiful and witty package. The writing is just as usual high standard for Dolly Alderton which is funny and witty and heartwarming and I really really loved it. The reason this one's slightly lower rated to me is just because it was from that male perspective and I feel like it might resonate with some people but 
there is a certain few chapters in the book that are from a different perspective that I just think that I loved and I would have loved it to be that perspective instead and that to be expanded on. I didn't love Andy as our main character and to be in his head. So that's the only reason I'm rating it slightly lower than the other books that I've read by Dolly. But this is still a 3.75, almost a four star for me. So it was a good fun time. And then the next book I want to talk about was a four star read and this is as long as lemon trees grow. I'm really glad that I finally read this one. This has been on my TBR for so long and this book basically follows this girl and it is set in war-torn Syria and she is volunteering at a hospital. She was just a university pharmacy student and then when the conflict broke out she started volunteering at a hospital and she is in such a difficult situation. She's trying to look after her pregnant sister-in-law and she's volunteering at this hospital seeing horrific things every single day and basically this whole story follows this internal struggle that she's having whether she should stay and help or whether she should try and leave the country and protect herself and her sister-in-law and it is heartbreaking it's very poignant it made me cry I have like tear stains in this book from the end because as I was reading it I was literally like dabbing dab drying my tears with the pages so that I could keep on reading um it's very very beautiful it's a very very beautiful story and I would really recommend that everyone pick it up the reason it's not a five star for me is just some of the writing choices um and the pacing I think but it absolutely doesn't take away from the heartbreaking subject matter and and I still think it is such an important read next up we have a short story collection and this I read for my book club my friend book club and it was my pick so this I kind of read actually mostly in October but I finished it this month and it is Eyes, Guts, Throat, Bones and this one I'm so so glad that the content really matched up to the cover because I did buy this for the cover because it's absolutely stunning um, but this is a collection of short stories and it is so well done in my opinion. They are dark and creepy and queer and heartfelt stories and they all explore these kind of hidden desires or kind of dark impulses that we all have. It really plays with folklore and horror elements and it was just such a wild ride. Some of these stories I think are just going to stick with me for such a long time. The reason this isn't rated higher for me is because I just find it really hard to find a five star short story collection because obviously some are going to hit a lot more than others but still this is a 4.5 star for me and I really really recommend it. So the next book I want to talk about is also a 4.5 star book and it was also a perfect winter read as the year is coming to a close and everything is getting so much colder here in the UK. This was such a fun book to read. This is The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. So this is set in medieval northern Russia and you're following Vasya who is a young girl growing up in this very remote village on the edge of this forest. And Vasya is the only one who can see the spirits that help to protect her family and her house and also her whole village and in the wilderness in the forest as well. And basically this book follows a quite a long span of time as you're following changes happening in this village as new people arrive, different people leave and also this kind of clash between a newer Christianity religion with the old ways of doing things in the village. For me this does have a really slow start. I did not mind that too much. I actually mostly listened to this as an audiobook because the writing is really lyrical and it's very atmospheric but I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed how it explored wildness and girlhood and I also really enjoyed the ending so I will carry on with this series and this one was a 4.5 stars for me. So next up I want to talk about the book club book for the Reading Around the World book club. So this is the book that we picked for November and it's my favourite book that we've read so far for the Reading Around the World book club and it is Havana Year Zero. So this book is set in 1993 in Cuba during the special period which is basically a time in Cuba when the Soviet Union basically collapsed and it was a time of real... <laughs> Hello! Hi Missy! What's that? Hello! She's grumpy because I won't let her drink my tea. Your tummy ache if you drink that. She's off. So as I was saying, Havana Year Zero is set in 1993 in Cuba during the special period. And this is basically a time, this is basically a time following the collapse of the Soviet Union and what that meant for Cuba, which was basically widespread economic crisis. And there was not enough food, not enough jobs going around. And, and this book, which is set in Havana, is basically following this mathematician called Julia. And she describes this as Havana Year Zero, which is the lowest point on a parabolic curve. But this book is so 
interesting because it actually follows this mathematician and also some of her friends as basically they are trying to prove that the telephone was actually invented by a man called Miyuchi in Havana and there is this document that is basically proving that this is the case that the telephone was invented in Havana and they are basically searching for this document and it is just such a fun read and it really took me by surprise the writing style feels like it's a friend who's telling you a story and it's very scandalous there's so many twists and turns everybody is lying but everyone is also got their own motivations and it's set on this backdrop of cuba that is going through this crisis and so you learn also a lot about cuba as well while you're reading it but it was just like so many times i was actually gasping at this story and it was so much fun to read and i think that's why it has to be one of my favorites for the reading around the world book club so far because so many of the reads that we've read have been so like tragic and so sad and this one was just an absolute breath of fresh air and it was really unique so Havana Year Zero was very very fun. So next up another book that I managed to listen to as an audiobook and when I finished this book I originally gave it four and a half stars and then now I've thought about it more I finished it at the very beginning of the month I'm really thinking actually it was probably a five star book so I'm gonna give it five stars because that's what my heart's telling me to do but this book is A Deadly Education by Naomi Novik. I've read a few other Naomi Novik books, actually they might be on this shelf maybe. Yeah, Uprooted is right there, that's the one that I liked the most. So basically this book is set in the Scholomance, Scholomance? I'm not sure how you actually say it, even though I should because I listened to it as an audiobook. But it's basically set in this magical school where magical students go to basically have a chance at survival because if they don't go to the school, they're almost certainly going to be dead. And if they do go to the school, they have to survive their way through and then they might have a chance at survival outside the school. But what's so fun about this book is that you follow Elle, who basically, when she was a little girl, had this prophecy about her that she is going to be a great and powerful magic user with the potential to basically destroy the world. But basically, you follow Elle as she's in this school and she is refusing to use any of this great and powerful dark magic because once you start using it, you basically can't turn back. She doesn't want to be some dark ruler of the universe and so she's trying not to use this magic. And I just loved this dynamic that it created of her having this immense amount of power that she cannot use and what it kind of meant for her place in the school. I have to say this book is definitely in no way perfect. It's not objectively that well written in a way because it's really, really info dump heavy. There is a lot of exposition, especially early on in the book, but basically just goes oh this is how this bit of the school works this is how the magic works and she'll just kind of give you a little lecture on it but I did not mind that info dumping at all because it was so unique and it was so fun to actually listen and learn about it so even though it's not technically that good like I still think I'm gonna give it five stars because I just loved so much of the story and the characters and the world and I'm really excited to carry on with this series. Another thing that I really liked about this book is the way that her internal kind of co contradictions of what she was thinking and what her actions were actually doing were became like a point of reflection for her in later in the book and i just like when books do that for characters so yeah i'm giving this book five stars and i'm very happy about it and next up we have my second five star read of the month and it is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. This one's just so cute and so fun. It's exactly what I wanted. It delivered what I was expecting it to deliver and it did it in such a charming, lovely way. Basically, Emily is a very grumpy professor type and she is trying to make an Encyclopedia of Fairies, the first ever Encyclopedia of Fairies to ever exist. And she is very close to finishing this encyclopedia. She has to do one more chapter and she is going to this very remote northern village to try and finish this chapter. She gets to this village, she kind of makes a faux pas and lots of the villagers decide that they really hate her and she's kind of struggling until her academic competitor and also kind of also her friend also arrives at the village and charms the pants off everyone and pisses off Emily in the process. I loved the romance in this one, it was so so sweet. But honestly what made it for me was I just loved the world. The world building itself was simple but it was very well done and it also gives Gives you this really fun cast of side characters that I just absolutely love. If you like the grumpy sunshine trope in romance then you'll absolutely love this especially if you love when the grumpy one is the woman in the relationship but this one is just so much fun. Also don't let the cover fool you because it's actually a very winter themed story. It's set in this snowy landscape, it's got fairies made of ice and it's actually just a really wintry and cold story that's really fun to curl up with. If you're like me and you do really like cozy fantasy but a lot of it you get kind of annoyed with because 
nothing ever seems to happen and it sometimes just feels a bit like twee and annoying then pick this book up because it's so cozy but it's also still got such a good plot and a real great cast of characters it's very transportive and the other thing is that i just love when academic characters actually sound smart and academic like emily just cares about this encyclopedia and she is so passionate about it and it's actually such a good point and part of her character that she is academic and really drives the plot forward in a way that makes sense for the story and for her character and yeah i just thought it was such a fun book so if you're looking for a cozy fantasy this winter pick this book up because it was five stars from me the final book that i want to mention i actually think i read probably more than 12 books i think i've miscounted the books that i've been talking about but the final book i just want to quickly mention is the book of tarot the modern guide for tarot card reading so i've been reading this just for fun and also i've been reading it for research for the book that i'm writing which maybe i'll make a whole video on because i've been talking about it a bit on tiktok but i don't think i've ever mentioned that i'm writing a book on this channel before but i'm writing a book series it's a young adult fantasy adventure story and lots of the magic and the world is based on the tarot so this was a productive read and also a fun one and then just very quickly before we end i'll mention the three books that i am currently reading i am furthest through mort which is a discworld book and this is the first in the kind of death sequence of books i'm loving this i love when death shows up in the other discworld books i'm excited for kind of getting to know more about death and also mort so that's going to be fun i'm already like about 40% through this book loving it and then another one that I've just started but I'm already loving and I'm definitely going to finish this this month is The Jasmine Throne I'm actually currently doing a reading vlog where I'm reading this book so look out for that probably be up next week I'm only like 50 pages in or 30 pages in and I'm really liking it already I like the vibes this is an Indian inspired high fantasy and it's got a rivals to lovers with a trapped princess and the maid servant who has to look after her but they're both on the opposite ends of this political spectrum and yeah i think it's going to be a very very fun read i'm already loving the writing and finally the one on kindle that i've just started to read is the witch would not by olivia atwater this is by the author of half a soul which is a cozy regency inspired fantasy that i read last year and loved and so this one is i think set in the same world but it's victorian time instead of regency but i'm expecting just to love this just as much and i'm only 10 percent into this book but i'm really enjoying it so they are the books that i am currently reading so i think that we have finally got to the end of filming this video thank you so much for watching my november reading wrap up please let me know the favorite thing that you read this month or any books that you read i'll be really interested to know in the comments and also if you've read any of these books please let me know your thoughts and if you haven't already please subscribe because it means so much to me but that is all for me today and i will talk to you again soon bye